I'm a physician researcher with grant funding and multiple publications. And one question I get all the time is, oh, how do you do it all? How do you balance? And the answer might surprise you. It's not about what I do, it's about what I don't do. Over the years, I've identified habits and activities that waste time and drain energy. And so by cutting them out, I've become far more productive. So in this video, I'm gonna share the eight things I quit to stay productive and focus in my career as a doctor and researcher. If you're trying to balance clinical work, research, and anything in between, this could change the game for you. Let's dive in. Number one, don't have notifications on all the time. I used to have my phone buzzing with emails, social media alerts, and text messages all day long. But here's the thing, every time I got interrupted, it derailed my focus, and it just took forever to get back on track. Now, I check my emails twice a day at 10.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m., and these are during dedicated email blocks. And if an email task requires more than 15 minutes to handle, I schedule it as a task on my calendar. For social media, I only go on at certain times. And then finally, for group messages, I mute them. Those constant WhatsApp notifications from large groups, they are mostly just side conversations that I don't really need to be part of. I can go in and read when I'm free, but I don't want it to interrupt my day. So by setting these boundaries, I protect my deep work time and get more done. Number two, don't consume without an output. I used to have this pressure to read every new research paper or finish every book just to feel productive. But honestly, I was just skimming papers with a real purpose or just reading the title. And, and it was just a vanity metric so that I could say I've read how many books or I've read how many papers, but really I wasn't using them. Now, when I read, I have a clear goal. For a research paper, it's about finding a research gap, designing a project, or writing a paper. And when reading research papers for clinical work, it's more about applying evidence-based medicine, or uh, I use it to teach residents or fellows. Even for nonfiction books, I don't just breeze through them on two times speed, because I could do that. Instead, I actively implement one or two lessons right away. And so every piece of content I consume now has a purpose, and that's made all the difference. Number three, don't just read research papers, study them. Since I've stopped trying to read every research paper, now I can give more time and attention to the ones that truly matter. And my goal isn't just to skim through, but it's to deeply process and absorb the information. I'll take notes, I'll connect the ideas and think about how I can apply what I've learned. And the key is to study the paper, not just read. And once I've done that, I make sure to Im implement the knowledge into my work, whether it's in designing a study, improving patient care, or writing a paper. That way, the time I spend is truly productive. I know conducting a research project is an overwhelming process, so I made the idea to pick a blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven-step process from the idea generation phase to the paper submission phase. Plus, you'll get my free five-day email course, Jumpstart Your Academic Writing. We will cover mindset, see writing tips, how do you read brightest block, and more. So click in the link in the description below. Number four, don't skim on paying for time-saving solutions. I used to do everything myself to save a few bucks. Doing all chores myself, yep. And I would never pay for an app or service. But eventually, I realized I was spending so much time on tasks I didn't really enjoy, time I could have spent with my family or advancing my career. So now I outsource things like laundry, groceries, meal prep. I also invest in apps that save me time, like tools that dictate articles or help me create meeting notes. And if I want to learn something new, I don't hesitate to pay for a course or hire a coach to speed up the process. Remember, there's a cost to everything. You either pay with your money, your time, or mistakes. I chose to pay with money to save both time and headaches. Number five, don't rely on memory alone. Use systems. There's just too much to keep track of. Admin tasks, deadlines, family schedules, you name it. So I used to write everything down, but it became an overwhelming to-do list. And the boring tasks like the mandatory trainings or grant reports, I keep pushing them off until the last minute. So now instead of doing that, I immediately schedule everything into my calendar. If something is due in a month, and I know it'll probably take two hours, I will block off one week before the deadline and also add a buffer closer to the due date. That way, nothing slips through the crack. And for my family, we use a shared calendar to track travel, hospital shifts, school events, everything. Having systems like this keeps my brain clear for the things that truly matter. 
Number six, don't skip thinking time in my calendar. Do you ever feel like you're too busy to even think? And that was me. I felt so overwhelmed with projects that I didn't even have time to think. I was constantly reacting to tasks without stepping back to assess if I was even on the right track. Now I schedule a two hour block each week for strategic thinking time. This is when I review my work process and identify areas to improve. It's my chance to ask, is this working? Or how can I make it better? If you feel like you're too busy to take that time, trust me, you need it even more. A little reflection can break the overwhelm cycle and save you hours in the long run. Number seven, don't multitask, focus on one thing at a time. I used to juggle multiple research projects in the same week, thinking that I was being efficient, but I wasn't really making real progress on any of them because switching between projects wasted so much mental tap, energy and also administrative overhead. And so now I work in one week sprints or two week sprints. What does that mean? I dedicate an entire week to pushing one project to its next milestone. And so this single tasking approach has been a game changer for getting things done faster with better focus. Number eight, I stop comparing myself to others and focus on my own path. If I were to compare myself to other clinical researchers at my current level, I wouldn't call myself a star because there are plenty of peers with more grants, publications, and papers in higher impact journals. And yes, some might even argue that creating content on YouTube and social media is a distraction from my research career. But I've learned to focus on what I truly enjoy and what aligns with my values. I love teaching, whether it's academic writing, clinical research, and creating content has become an important part of my journey. Everyone has your own path and comparison only takes you further from yours. These are the eight things I don't do that help me stay productive as a doctor researcher. But this is just the beginning. There's so much more to building a productive and fulfilling career in research. If you want to learn how to streamline your work even further, check out my next video where I dive into my time management system as a doctor researcher. I'll see you there.